Mbonye Day. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to the Zoe Online Fellowship and a good evening out there. My name is Sharon Chumcha Senyonga. I'm Simon Senyonga. To all those that are tuned in from different nations, thank you so much for doing so. And you're very welcome once again, yes. Welcome to the realm of God. You didn't hear me right. Welcome to the realm of God where impossibility is a myth, where it is just a place that is full of signs, miracles and wonders. To our audience on Zoom, you look lovely. Thank you so much for representing Prophet Elvis Mbonya and the grace that he carries. We love you so much. Now, don't forget that the hashtag is hashtag Prophet Elvis Mbonya. If you want to show more love, go to all those different social media platforms, people who are watching on from Facebook, from their website. You are very welcome. And today, can never leave you the same. Again, on behalf of Prophet Elvis Mbonya, I would love to welcome the politicians and the society icons. Thank you so much for being a part of this online fellowship. Now, remember mm -hmm. that tonight, you've come for your life to be taken to a higher level, a higher glory, a higher honor. That is all that you expect from this place. You expect the refreshment of the spirit. You expect your life to take on a whole new shape, a whole new perspective, and the whole world looks at you and wonders, where did these ones come from? And you will tell them this one thing, that we have believed in Prophet Elvis Mbonye because we know that it comes in the very name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, he causes us to prosper, to be enlarged, and to be preserved. You magnify and rejoice because that is your testimony. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. We the righteous run to it and we are saying Jesus is here. He's right here with us. Come on, let's declare it. I walk. I walk with the pride of a lion. Nothing can stand in my way. I stand on the highest. I stand on the highest. 
I just lift your voice and bless his name. His river is flowing in this place. The river of life is flowing in this place. Just glorify the Lord right now. Libra Masula da Makara Brobo Sila Rodina. Likra Broko Sala da Bara Bromondara. Just bless his name right now. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. There shall be showers of blessing sent from the Savior above. Lift your voice and sing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. There shall be seasons refreshing. Showers of blessing. There shall be showers of blessing from Jesus. Sent from the Streams of living water that's flowing in this place from eternal life to us, the sons of God. If you must sing a precious reviving grace, sing it to me. I can feel your gentle. from this place can change and do anything in your life. Now, the Lord will never do anything without telling his prophet. And that we've clearly seen are through the different prophecies that Prophet Elvis Mwenye has given to us. Prophecies that touch systems of the world. Prophecies that even the people who are in these systems or anything concerning generations and the world, no one knows. And yet, because of a prophet, we get to see these things and see them come to pass. 
And you know, all this is meant to show you what you've been designed to be, what you as a child of God has been designed to be, and what the body of Christ actually has been called to demonstrate. The body of Christ has been called to demonstrate the insight and the foresight of the Lord to shape the agenda and the perspective of the Lord concerning any matter. There is nothing. The Lord has an opinion on anything that goes on in the earth. There is nothing which is hidden from him. And not just hidden for the sake of revealing it, but to show us what exactly to do when it has been revealed. So the question is, as a child of God, what do you do to position yourself to take advantage of this prophetic word? You need to be extremely, extremely keen. Because every word that comes out of the mouth of Prophet Elvis Mbonye, Number one, we're sure it never falls to the ground. But above all that, it gets to position us accordingly to benefit from this year of the overcomer. Because you know, the, 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 the Lord has a reward for you this year. He has a perspective for you this year. He has a pattern for you this year. And he continues to demonstrate it to you through the words that come to pass. Now, what will you do even as you watch this prophetic word? You're seeing that you're magnifying the caliber of this anointing, which is the anointing working in your life. But above all, you're magnifying the caliber of the prophet who is in our midst, who is shaping Amen. actually the ideal perspective of the Lord concerning the body of Christ in this day and age. Democratic Republic of Congo, there is going to be... Change. The Democratic Republic of Congo has finally elected a new president. Their Felix Tshisekedi has surprisingly won the race. I had another prophetic experience here in the UK. Major banks had been hacked. They even started hacking in two credit card systems. Massive hack attack involving 100 million customers. Capital One, you have been hacked. is a sure word of prophecy in our day under which the greatest darkest secrets of rulers and institutions are brought completely to light 7th january 2020 i saw something also in this nation and it had to do a lot with a banking crisis uh, some Crisis in the banking area. Crisis in the banking area. Because there are things, revelations, you leave this, this, this stuff. It's something again different. Eh? The things that come out and then they're not supposed to come out. I'm talking about revelations within the banking. And they're not supposed to come out and they're a lot of questions. So then, how come this? How come that? How come that? And there's a lot of talk about banking and there's a crisis that happens because it creates that skepticism. You'll see it also come to pass. Two months later, news media broke with shocking revelations of Ugandan business mogul Ham's financial woes that culminated in a landmark court case that created a major banking crisis, placing Uganda's financial sector under international scrutiny. In a landmark decision, Uganda's commercial court last week awarded business mogul Ham Kigundu the ruling in his loan case against the Diamond Trust Bank. But could this weigh heavily on the country's financial sector? Justice and Repito Odonya ordered the DT Bank of Uganda and Kenya to refund the entire mortgage and land titles which are Miss Chugunda's offered as security to acquire rent from the financial facility. So the second defendant's loan was illegal, unethical, and in breach of the Financial Institution Act 2004 as amended and the Bank of Uganda Consumer Protection Guidelines 2011. There was no license. That's why Diamond Trust Bank Kenya did not produce any license. You've been following in court. True to the word of the prophecy, this court case shocked the banking industry and created an unprecedented crisis whose handling had huge implications for the future of the banking sector in Uganda, causing both banks and regulators to scramble to address the dangerous precedent set by the court ruling on syndicated loans and its adverse implications on Uganda's financial sector and economy.
Court decision in Ham Enterprises Limited versus Diamond Trust Bank Uganda Limited has caused some consternation in the financial services industry. DTB can give a loan directly to Hamis without seeking the authority of the central bank. Under Uganda's, uh, under the 2003 Financial Institutions Act, it is illegal. Bank of Uganda chooses to only look at part of the law. And as a result, we have this kind of situation and confusion. We have put uh, Bank of Uganda more in the cookie jar. Now they know that Uganda will seek account accountability. There are rules that govern this country. The Financial Institutions Act will review it and it was exposed. This and many other prophecies coming to fulfill with such accuracy continue to establish Prophet Elvis Mbonye's authority as one who speaks as of the very oracles of God. And we accord double honor to Prophet Elvis Mbonye. Indeed, we are called double honor. One more time, let's clap and give an applause to what the Lord has given us as the gift to our nation, a gift to the generations. Prophet Elvis Mbonye, this very moment, we'll get ready to give. So the most important thing that unlocks the secret of the prosperity of the Lord for your life as a child of God is actually the blessing of the Lord or what some call the anointing of the Lord. It is what causes, it is the cause of the eventual effect, the eventual material effect that you see. Now attention is supposed to be given to the blessing the blessing which causes the material effect. Most people look for the material multiplication and they ignore the cause of this effect. So the secret was unlocked by Jesus Christ. That's what he knew in the book of John chapter 9 um, from verses 1. He talks about this man who was born blind. And you know, the disciples of Jesus come and you know, tell him that, you know, why was this man born blind? And then it, and, you know, they, did the parents sin? Why was I born poor? Is it because I have a generational curse? It cannot be. As far as Jesus is concerned, there's nothing like a generational curse because we're in him. So then he says that they did not, it's not because of his parents, but actually what was happening to him was for the sake of the glory of the Lord to be manifested. Now, what does this show you? That whatever you're going through, this is a moment of exhortation for you, even as you give, to show you actually not to feel downcast. Because what the devil will do is that he will tell you that you're suffering, you're having this contradiction because of a particular reason. But the Lord is now giving another perspective. That what the devil intended for evil, Amen. the Lord turns it for good. Amen. That was, this was the testimony of that. That whatever the devil intended for blinding this man was actually meant for the manifestation of the glory of the Lord. But the most interesting part was the process of the healing. And you know, what we are interrogating here is the process of how we manifest this material blessing. So Jesus then, I think must in verse 6, where he tells this man uh -huh, that when he had spoken, he spat on the ground. Now Jesus uses a rare mechanism to unlock the prosperity of this man. Something that wasn't known by the world, something that wasn't common to the face of the world. So he says he spat on the ground and made a spittle, and then he used that clay, and he anointed. Now, pay attention to the words that are used. He didn't say he opened the eyes of the blind man. He said he anointed the eyes of the blind man. Now, the solution to his blindness was not the opening of the eyes. It was actually the anointing. That as long as he had the anointing, upon the man of God. As long as you have the anointing upon Prophet Elvis Mbonye, that anointing is what causes the prosperity. And that anointing comes from the Lord. So he says he anointed his eyes and eventually the eyes opened up. And in the subsequent verses, people begin to wonder, was this the man that we knew? And that's the testimony that you have. They look at him and they wonder, is this the person that we knew? Is this how he looked like? Is this who he was? And that was his very testimony. But the man magnified the anointing that caused him to actually manifest the testimony. He said, when they asked him, how did you get to see like this? He said, I met a man. Amen. I met a man. You out there, you go back and you tell the world that you met a man. You met a man. That man was Jesus Christ. Amen. And that man has overturned your life. Amen. He has overturned your life by sending you one of his very own 
who is prophet Elvis Mbonye. So you magnify Jesus Christ as the source of your wealth. You magnify Jesus Christ as the source of your prosperity. You magnify him because you know he has sent you a prophet who has unlocked this. And now this sets the kind of mindset that you're supposed to have about the prosperity that comes to you. That's what he says in the book of 2 Corinthians 10.5, that casting down any imaginations which try to exalt themselves. So anybody tries to tell that actually you can't prosper that way. We have a testimony that actually Amen. you can prosper by the way of the Lord. You can prosper by the way of the Lord. So right now you get your prophetic and general offering and you engage with this revelation. Knowing that it cannot fail, it can never fail. There is nothing of the Lord that he prescribes that can fail. There is no amount of contradiction that can cause his word to be backtracked. Every word that goes out to him comes back with a fruit and with a result and you are the testimony of that word that the word of the Lord comes back with a fruit and a result. Glory to God. Someone turn to your neighbor and tell them testimonies. Testimonies. Peculiar testimonies. Peculiar testimonies. Those are the exact testimonies that come from this place. Mm -hmm. Testimonies that are peculiar because of the anointing and the caliber that Prophet Elvis Mbonye is. All right. And the scripture says again in the book of John 3, 26 to verses 30, talks about why you testify and how you testify. Give it to me in the, in the New King James Version. So you realize... That whenever we come here, we encourage you to share your testimony on testimony at prophetelvis.com. Because there is a reason as to why this testimony has come to you. And this is as to why the Lord wants you to air it out so that the world can know. A time came in the scriptures, in the time of John the Baptist, when a controversy ensued about how the Lord wanted to purify. So, they were the disciples of John and they were the followers of the Jews. And they were wondering why many people are following um, why many people actually aligned to John the Baptist and Jesus Christ? And you see, they came to seek a solution about a particular testimony they wanted to see. See what he tells them. He says, and they came to John and said, Rabbi, he who was with you, they're talking about Jesus now, beyond the Jordan, to whom you have testified, you see, to whom you have, to whom you have talked about, behold, he is baptizing and all are coming to him. All right? So you see, again, he sort of gives a foresight of what the testimony was actually doing. That was drawing men to Jesus Christ. Amen. So verse 27 says, John answered and said, A man, so he was now correcting them and telling them, that don't be taken up by that, you know, about following him. He says, a man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. There is no testimony which can come to you Amen. unless it has come from heaven. Why must this be solid to you? Because... The devil will try to tell that that's so small. 
That's so small. No the, wonder the, the Jews were trying to look for a controversy. They were saying, no, no, it's a small thing for them to follow Jesus. He doesn't, no, no, no. There is nothing that a man can have that doesn't come from heaven. Magnify that testimony. Amen. There is nothing small that the Lord does. Amen. Because as long as you magnify that, what you call that small thing, then it actually is exalted. Now we'll see what actually this does. In verses 28, he says, You yourselves bear witness with, with, with that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have sent before him. Verses 29. About the bride, verses 30, where I put, want to put emphasis. Verses 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. The intention of your testimony is for you to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. And you take away any mindset from yourself that this came by my effort. This came by my connection. This came by my knowledge. So this segment is actually meant to demonstrate to you that Jesus is being magnified as Lord. That Jesus is being magnified as the hope of nations. That Jesus is being magnified as the hope of faith for all the generations. So as you magnify this testimony, you know one thing. Get it to you that I must decrease and Jesus must increase. When I testify... I decrease and Jesus increases. And this becomes real to you. That in your life, you will stop seeing your efforts and you will see the anointing. You will stop seeing your weakness and you will see the anointing. You will stop seeing your wisdom and you will see the anointing. You must decrease and Jesus will increase. Mind-blowing encounters. Extraordinary personal testimonies. Unfolding before masses as lives and destinies are completely realigned upon encountering the true spirit of prophecy. Now I'm going to release a miracle towards this eh? because the Spirit of God is saying something to do with people that are approaching rent. Eh? You know that is not your level, but now you can clap. Eh? <laughs> but for the meantime, you believe in miracles. Eh? I'm suspending some of those things. And then counseling others. And then releasing finances for others. Eh? Now three categories of miracles that you're going to find yourself in. Eh? In the name of Jesus, it's done. Glory to God. From 2020, after the lockdown effects, I had rent areas accrued. Uh, to this, uh, we had a meeting with the landlord uh, and we uh, came up with a payment schedule. In his payment schedule, he had some months of rent uh, forfeited and uh, had to pay the others. So uh, the schedule was running fine. I was fulfilling my payments. And when he noticed that, he reinstated the months he had forfeited. And uh, we drew a new payment plan. Because I liked the place, I uh, obliged to the payment schedule. And uh, the deadline day was 26th of March, 2021. So uh, I was eager for that fellowship, anticipating that uh, a word from the prophet would come in that regard. And here, when he gave the prophetic word about rent, I got excited and I, I was very alert because this is what I was believing for. He said, some will have their rent answered, others suspended, and then went ahead to release finances for those whose finances were held. Now, true to his word, my finances were held for the, past, for the previous month. For no inconceivable reason, it was just everything halted. For all the previous for all the previous deals and even the current ones so uh the week went on i stood on this prophetic word i kept declaring believing and uh, i knew it was done because it was really done and i know the words of prophet Elvis in boy never fall to the ground now uh come friday to the prophetic word released by prophet Elvis in Bonye on the release of finances i saw uh, my client uh, call and they had agreed some of them had agreed to the signing of agreements which they hadn't done in a month some had gone ahead to make deposits and some had even gone ahead to give pay dates then saturday because i hadn't fulfilled my 
financial obligations for Friday, deadline day, 26th. I had my doors chained. And uh, because I was away, I held on to the prophetic word, a prophet released uh, on the 23rd of that week. I saw uh, the prophetic word come into play because Sunday, I'm called by uh, my landlord and his caretakers wanting to find a solution. And we later agreed uh, that I pay the guys who chained my doors and uh, payments were suspended, deadlines cancelled, a true to another prophetic word given by the prophet that some will have these things cancelled, some will have them uh, suspended. And I saw that coming to pass. Uh, therefore, I give all glory, honor, and praise to the God of Prophet Elvis Mboni and give all double honor and reverence to Prophet Elvis Mboni. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Do not let your destiny hang in the balance. Share your testimonies at testimony at prophetelvis.com. Jesus is right here in this place. Just lift your hands and surrender everything to him. Whatever it is, just surrender it in the presence of the Lord. Lift your voice and glorify him right now. Lift your voice and magnify Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you're here. Your spirit in me. You're anointing all the flaws. Making me whole. Sing, Jesus, you're here. Jesus, you're here. He's dwelling in you right now. Dwelling in me. His fire is right here.
the life of excellence, the life of dominion, the transcendent life, the mysterious life that you have given us. Father, I thank you for the greatest investment, for the mystery that you have given us. Father, we worship you we honor you and we receive tonight all that you have prepared for us so that we may dominate and subdue nations before your throne. Father, we thank you for this grace, this supreme grace that reigns over all creation. And our Father, our hearts and our minds are open to receive this mystery that our Father carries. To receive your word, your prophetic word, your prophetic instruction. And it is effectual in our lives to the glory of your holy name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now say this. Say this. The mystery that my father has, I have it. That mystery works effectually in me and produces identical results. The wisdom that my father has, I have that wisdom. The testimony 
that my father carries. I demonstrate that. The dominion in which my father walks, I have that. The investment, the greatest investment that my father is, is what I am. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, our fellowship, so we fellowship. So we fellowship. Defines is the foundation of that mystery. You know, Jesus said, to those that are out, these things are spoken in a parable. But unto you, remnants, it is given to understand the pattern, the mystery that your father, our father, my father carries. Amen. Listen carefully. It is very important to understand the peculiar attributes of this mystery, its foundation. You know, Zoe is the name that God gave to our father. We do not call ourselves Zoe. God called us Zoe Fellowship. It is not a trend that now the trend is choosing Greek names. No. Zoe is what God called our fellowship. Amen. And Zoe is the life of God. The essence of who God is. Amen. Zoe is the power that created everything. This is what he said in the first piece of John. He says, that which was from the beginning, it is Zoe. So when God gives you the frame, the identity is Zoe. He's saying that he's grafting you into the very beginning. He's grafting you into the power that shapes all things, governs all things. That's some mystery. You know, when God wanted to dominate the world, what did he do? He invested himself. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he invested his son, meaning his reproduction. The word son of God means God in the flesh. That's what it means. If you're a son of God, then you're God in the flesh. If you don't believe it, then you don't believe what Jesus stands for. You must believe that Jesus was God in the flesh. And now he said that as many as believed in his purpose, to them he gave the power to become what he is. He's the pattern and the firstborn of the sons of God. Glory to God. Amen. So, God invested himself. That means that God is an investor. Amen. You'll understand the mystery. A few weeks ago, our father said, this is the greatest investment yeah. of heaven on earth. Yeah. And I'm telling you, we are called Zoe Fellowship. Yeah. He says that the prosperity of nations is counted upon us. Glory to God. Amen. The healing, the restoration of nations is counted upon us in divine order, in God's agenda, in God's plan. Now you understand why we're called Zoe Fellowship says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have what? Zoe! Are you getting it? We are the reason that this world cannot be destroyed. We are Zoe. This is talking about you. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Zoe. Zoe. Zoe fellowship. Should enter into the fellowship of the remnants. Amen. In this generation, in this generation, in this day and age, this is why prophet, our father, say that you are encountering the greatest investment that heaven has presented thus far. Glory to God. Amen. 
And you must understand that when you come into contact with this mystery, that we who identify with this prophetic anointing, you have the mystery that your father has. And it is working effectually in you. There is no one, there is no body in this world that encounters this mystery and remains the same. This is the mystery which was from the very beginning. This mystery is what brings dead nations back to life. This is the mystery that raises dead bodies back to life. This is the same mystery. We are decoding the mystery. This is the mystery that brings dead phones back to life. This is the same mystery that corrects broken marriages. It is the mystery of eternal life. And you have that mystery because you are a partaker of Zoe Fellowship. That is what makes a remnant. You know, the Bible says that whatsoever is born of God dominates this world. What is it that dominates the world? It is the life of God that we are. We don't just have the life of God. We are the life of God. We are God manifest in the flesh to our generation. I told you, son of God means God in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. You are Emmanuel. That is if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. That whosoever believes in him should be a carrier of God. A vessel of God. Glory to God. God is an investor. And we are God's investment to this generation. That's why our prophet has said, carry yourself like one that has been committed with the destinies of nations. Glory to God. Because the prosperity of these nations, the fall and rise of nations is seen upon us. Whether they believe it or not, let God be true and let every man be, remain a liar. We know who sent us. We know who we are. We know what we have inherited. We know what we stand for. Soon, the world will acknowledge, we'll know that we are sent of God and we are a people a nation on divine agenda. Look, Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so do I send you. And the works that I do, shall you do. And greater works than this, because I go unto the Father. How can Jesus, how can God, in all his wisdom, commission us to do what Jesus did without equipping us with the same instruments of authority that Jesus had? It is impossible. That means that you are as strong as Jesus. Amen. You are as powerful as Jesus. Amen. You are as rich as Jesus. Amen. You are Jesus to this generation. I, that's what we hear. He said, as the Father sent me, so do I send you. And the works that I do, must you do. It's a divine commission. It is not, it is not uh, an alternative. What if I fail the work? Do you have another alternative that I can? No. The works that Jesus did, we must do. And then he took, he, he put the bar higher. He said that, and greater works than this, because I go to my father. And I am with you always. We have enforcement. We are the greatest. I am the greatest investment. I am. You have to personalize. You have to believe is to take upon the identity of that which you believe upon yourself. That is what, so if I believe in prophet is to receive his identity as my own. That is what believing is. Glory to God. Amen. That is what makes every remnant, every believer, everyone who is submitted to this anointing, the greatest investment of God in the earth. And that is the law of dominion. The law of investment is the law of life. Life is about giving. Our fellowship is about giving. When we talk about investment, we are talking about giving. We are decoding. We are decoding the mystery. When he said, I am the greatest investment, he's saying, that I am the greatest thing. I'm the greatest entity. The very best that God has invested. He said that as long as the earth remains, that means on a personal level, as long as you're still in bodily form, you must invest. There is no way you can continue to grow if you stop giving. Life gives. You know, how do I know that this microphone has life when it begins to grow and expand and takes over 
grows bigger than me. Then I say, this microphone is animated with life. Are you getting it? Eh? Because it is growing. That is a sign of life. Growth. Are you getting it? And what he gave us is life. Are you getting it? Eh? So, life gives. When you get married, you give birth just as it happened to all of us. We are brought forth because someone gave. Are you getting it? Whenever you cease to give, you begin to regress. That is a spiritual law. Whenever you cease to give, you begin to regress. There is no two ways about it. That's what it meant. That the only way that you can sustain yourself bodily, that when he talks about the earth, he's talking about everything in the natural, material sense. That the only way that you can grow your marriage is by giving. You have to give some love to someone. You know, if you don't give love, you cannot multiply. If you don't give of your resources, giving is the same as investing. If you don't invest your love, you have love, but you've got to give it to someone for it to grow, to grow and multiply. Investors rule this world. Inve I say investors on the natural plane and on the spiritual plane. The nations that dominate other nations are nations that have positioned themselves to give to other nations. Are you getting it? This is what he implies when he says that. The rich rule over the poor. The rich are the ones who give, who have positioned themselves to be givers. It is not just a matter of affirmation. Are you getting it? Look, the Bible instructs us, be imitators of God as dear children. What did God do? When he wanted to dominate the world. He did not just have fun. He gave his only begotten son. He invested his son. Which is himself. In the world. And what did he get back? A harvest of the body of Christ. Now he has many sons. Are you getting it? Eh? Now men do understand that naturally. This is the same parable that Jesus gave. The parable of the sower. And he said the kingdom of God. Is like a man should go and invest money. Yeah? Some falls on the ground, some falls on thorny ground. But the key says, when he was ex explaining that, he said that if you do not understand this parable, how then can you participate in the kingdom of God? If you don't understand sowing and reaping, the parable was because at that time the world was predominantly agriculture. Agriculture was the main business of the day. Now I can say the kingdom of God is as a man should go and invest in the world. He was talking about himself. The whole Bible, the revelation of the word of God is an investment cyclopedia that men cannot even fathom or begin to interpret. These people that you see out there, they are zillion miles away from where we are. We are way ahead of the world. All these masters they are offering, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of... The, is in the Bible. It's like search the scriptures. Look, there is no better investor than Jesus. There is no better investor than one that is committed to the vision of heaven on earth. This is what he means when he says, I'm the greatest investment. We are the greatest investment. Because whatsoever encounters one that carries the life of God, first of all, this life corrects everything that went wrong. It corrects. It is an intelligent life. When it touches you, you begin to prosper. You are rewired. Are you getting it? Now, when God, for example, wanted to redeem or to dominate Egypt, in the, in the generation of Jacob, who had Joseph as his son, what did God do? He hatched a plan. Joseph was taken to Egypt. Are you getting it? Joseph died to Jacob, his father. He was separated. Are you getting it? God invested Joseph where? In Egypt. So that he may what? Dominate Egypt. For whose sake? For the whole of Israel. Are you getting it? God gave, is showing us a pattern here. God is an investor. When God wanted to dominate the world of Solomon's day, what did he do? Do you know what happened when Solomon ascended to the throne? He got all everything that he inherited from his father. And the Bible says that Solomon when he went to God, you remember at night when God appeared to him, he says, I don't even know what to do. I don't even know how to govern. But give me wisdom. What did Solomon do? He invested.
invested his inheritance, what his father David had given him in sacrifices and invested him so that he may receive, inherit, dominate his world. And what did God say? That there shall never be anyone that is, any king that is richer than you or wiser than you in his time. Are you getting it? What did God do? What did God do? Look, how did Rahab end up in the hall of fame? Rahab invested her life. Rahab committed treason against her nation. Are you getting it? Because she died. She invested. You know, when you invest, the Bible says that unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But what do you do when you want to multiply it? Let it die. If you don't believe in giving, if you don't believe in investing, then you don't believe in Jesus Christ. The whole gospel is about giving. I get it. Visualization is good, important. Affirmation is good. Praying in tanks is good. But the foundation is giving. Are you getting it? Some people ask, but how come the remnants don't have overnights? How come there is a facility that God has provided for the remnants of God? Are you getting it? He said, heirs of God. He said, that shall be unto you what all these other things are. Are you getting it? Look, let me tell you. He says in Psalms 2 verse 8, Ask of me and I'll give you nations for an inheritance. Do you know what that takes? It takes a giver, an investor. Let us look at the natural realm. Do you know who controls nations? You think it's politicians? He said it is the rich who rule over the poor. You think it's the politicians who call the shots? It is not. It has never been. You think that America is ruled by those politicians? They are powerless. Do you know who holds the power? A handful of investors. A handful of investors. They're the ones that, what you call big tech. The investors, the ones who hold the money and know what to do with it. This is how God works. And the Bible says, which is not our portion, that the children of this world are in this age wiser than the children of God. People out there are invest. They know. That's why they say, you've got to go and work. They're saying that, go and invest your life into something. But God has made for us a place. Heirs of God. And it shall become to us what hard work is to the world. Are you getting it? You see, listen, you can never solve a problem on the same level at which it came. Whenever you pray to God to take you over a challenge, he will always give you something that is bigger than you. A vision that is bigger than you so that the energy of that vision can carry you. Are you getting it? For example, if you need a, you need a spouse, you need a job, you need a, a corporation, you need a bank, your desire is to own a bank, God will give you a vision. Your answer will come in the form of a vision that is bigger than a bank. A vision that is already dominating banks, the banking industry. And what is required of you is to honor and serve and connect to get grafted into that vision. By what? By your giving. Give your life. When you give your money, you're giving your life. You're giving your time. That your money represents the body of your life. Are you getting it? So that's how the energy of the bigger vision will carry you. Because he's been there, done that. Are you getting it? You say, we don't have to suffer like Christ suffered. Because when he suffered, I suffered in him. In this generation, what is the greatest investment? God has made for us a provision of a great vision. How do you know that this is where I should give? These are the prophetic signs and wonders. He says, that you may know that there is no office and this world that this anointing doesn't cover. What does that mean? Is it a sign for us to be well wishers? No! That is the wisdom of the just. He's showing you a place of investment. Look, do you really think this American election is about politicians? Do you know who calls the shots? It is the rich people of big tech. Do you know what they use? They are using money. Are you getting it? These things are not separated. The pandemic, the war, all those things, they are correlated. I want you to understand this. And you're either serving, using your resources to serve the kingdom of God or to serve darkness. These are perpetrators of darkness. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? And we have the mandates. 
to push back this darkness. Are you getting it? Look, do you know, do you know that over, over 90% of what you call the big tech, the people who call the shit, have major investments in a country called Israel? Israel is so small. They are pouring billions and billions and billions of dollars in Israel. Do you know why? Because they say Israel, a small nation, is the spring of all innovation. Call it agricultural innovation, the auto industry, the military, everything, almost everything that works, is, springs out of Israel. A small nation, like this, leading on the agricultural frontier. A small nation, leading on the military frontier. A small nation, leading on the auto industry. A small nation, leading in every, billions of dollars. Go there. Apple is in Israel. They, that is where all these ideas that you're impressed with, iPhones, cars, technology, agriculture, they're intubated in Israel. They're intubated in Israel. But where did Israel get this knowledge from? Who is Israel? Do you know who Israel is? You see, the natural things inform us who we are in the spirit. Don't you know that Israel are the seed of Abraham, natural seed of Abraham? That means that they inherit this knowledge. And we are the, if we are in Christ, we are the seed of Abraham. And we are the Jerusalem from above. We have something. Look, if go and find out if all these big companies, why do you think Israel is at the center of almost everything, of almost every revolution? The whole politics of the world is seeing around Israel naturally. But now there is Jerusalem from above. There is an Israel from above. Are you getting it? This is why he says that we are the greatest investment. If nations can pitch in Israel, and it works, is Israel, is Israel, is Israel is the only place. In, why? Why? There is a blessing that rests upon that nation. And it is the blessing. So remember, I told Abraham, I'll make you, I'll make you a great nation. And through you shall all nations be blessed. The word of God can be, cannot be broken. That is the natural seed of Abraham. Are you getting it? The natural seed of, he says that if a nation wants to be blessed, are you getting it? They have to connect with you. What are these people doing? Whether they know it or not, they are investing or giving to Israel. Are you getting it? You go and decide. That is what makes America great. It is Israeli technology. You go and look. Most of these major companies that you hear about the, in the world, they are, they are run on Israeli ideas. Are you getting it? But we have a better covenant based on better promises. That means that we have something that God prepared for the whole world that can bless the world. There is no nation. There are some, things, no, no, there are some nations which are not going to change until they come and invest and give to this vision. Let me tell you, when God wants to lift you, what he will give you is a place where you can give. You will pray all you can. But answered prayer comes when a man that carries a vision that is bigger than you comes so that you may be grafted into that vision. John chapter 15 says we are grafted into Christ. His life is our life. His blessing is our blessing. But you see, how do you connect to a bigger vision? It is by giving. Look through the Bible. There is no answered prayer without an offering. You want, let me show you. Acts chapter 4. These are people, previously fishermen. They got this life. And what happened? They became the center of blessings. Government could not contain. The Bible says that men started selling their businesses. Men, businesses, they started selling their banks. And they brought their offerings, the sum of it, on to the feet of the apostles. What did businessmen see that these people had? For a businessman, to, to sell his enterprise on which their lives depend and come to put the, re, the sum thereof on the feet of men who are previously known as unlearned fishermen. What does that take? Because God said, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former. The Bible says in one day, 5,000 were added. 5,000 were added. 5,000 were added to the in one day. Let us replicate that. This, how many fellowships have you had? You see? It is about giving. Men were, because they saw a better deal, 
They saw it better. All the promises of God are hinged upon one thing. Let me say this very clearly. All the promises of God are hinged upon giving. Upon giving, you will pray. When Cornelius prayed, what happened? God sent a man. The man, the man Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, his giving had reached out to heaven. And yet, the blessing could not be consummated, could not evolve until a man came. A man who carried a vision, that was Peter. In Acts chapter 10, says there is a man called Cornelius. In a place called straight. God knows where you stay. Go to him. His giving has ascended to heaven. What does heaven answer to? Investment. Where have you invested? Have you invested your family in the kingdom of God? What does the Bible say? Romans chapter 12. Look. It says, I beseech you, therefore brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your marriage that you present your business, that you present your career, that you present your profession, that you present your children, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. What does that mean? That you, do you know that you can present your marriage as an instrument of the gospel? Do you know that you can present your nation as an instrument of the gospel? Do you know that you can present your application as an instrument of the gospel? Do you know that you can present your life, your marriage, your car as an instrument of the gospel. What happens when you present, for example, what happens when you present your car as an instrument of the gospel? He's, when God gives, he starts at the level of nations. He will give you a nation of cars. That means that he gives you dominion over the auto industry. You invested one car. Prophet said that take advantage of this investment. I'm showing you how to take an advantage of advantage of the investment. How do you dedicate your marriage to God so that your marriage becomes an instrument of dominion? So that your marriage becomes a world dominating marriage. So that your idea becomes a world dominating idea. There is a pattern to it and that pattern is found in heirs of God. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to give are you getting it? Look through there. There is what they call, when you give birth to a child in the Old Testament, you dedicate the child. How do you dedicate? Not just by words and presenting your baby at the, at the door of the temple. You have to bring an offering. That offering represents a child. When you have to dedicate your, your a restoration, when you have to be restored, maybe in your work, whatever it is, what do you do? You present an offering. The offering is what he calls here. I beseech you therefore by them, therefore brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your career for restoration. It is not present your marriage for restoration. It's not about tears. There's a pattern that God, you can cry all you want, but we are giving you the instruction. Let me say this. It is evil for a man of God to deny you an opportunity to give. Anyone who wants you to die will deny you an opportunity to give anyone, anyone the best way to kill any nation is to stop it from giving to the anointing. If you want to kill a nation, if you want to kill an entity, you know what this lockdown is about? It's about it, the worst thing that can happen is to stop us from giving to the anointing. When you want to be set free, what do you do? You give an offering. It is the offering. That's what God did when he wanted to set the world free. His world. What? He gave. And he's telling us, be imitators of God as dear children. There is no way. Giving is the way of dominion. It is not affirmation. Affirmation is good on the foundation of giving. Are you getting it? The Bible calls fools. Well, the fool has said in his heart. We are talking about give, you saw religious people. The, the mountain of Esau. He said, the, be God's law on those, on those preachers. God's law. God's law, that is a matter. That is the spirit of Cain. You don't want God's people to give that they may dominate the world. When you give, you're not helping the minister. You're not helping Zoe fellowship. Are you getting it? Take an example. If, for example, a man is a, an agent for a factory, is he helping the factory when he goes to buy whatever they manufacture? So that he makes, is that man helping the factory? Is it the factory that needs the man or the man who... The factory initiated the idea. He's a bigger vision. 
if that man wants to grow, what does he do? What can he do? What can he do? He has to see to it that he becomes, he gets an incursion, does more and more to receive from that factory. Why? How does he do it? When he gets money, does he, where does he put it? He takes it back so that he may be multiplied. Then he sells again. Then he loses the money in the factory. Then he sells again. That man will grow as long as the factory is growing. Are you getting it? That is the mystery. But men understand it on the earth. Why should it be hard? For Christians to understand that giving is our way. It's a way that God has ordained for us to dominate this world. It is so simple. This is what it means. People think that that scripture in Malachi, is they, they fear it. But it says, you have robbed God of tithes and offerings. You know, God is more hard that you're not giving your tithes and offerings. Not because he lacks, but because that is the way he ordained for you. To enter into dominion, the dominion of heaven. Supernatural prosperity. Do you know, is there an investor that can invest in anything without first seeing the benefit? Are you an investor for us to say, show me how I'm going to profit from this. All the blessings of God that he shows you, they are a result of investing in the anointing, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is as though a man should find a field with a pearl and he goes and does what? Sells everything that he has. That he may do what? attain this anointing that preserves, that prospers. The kingdom of God is as a man who went on a journey and he had talents and he gave one three and he gave one four. He gave one a marriage. He gave one a car. He gave another job. He gave another presidency. What did you do with the talent? Did you invest it in the kingdom? The Bible is full of investment. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, when they were taking Jesus, he says, give me a denarius. And Jesus said, whose inscription is on this denarius, on the coin? And they told him, there is Caesar's face. And he says, give to Caesar therefore what belongs to Caesar. But he doesn't stop there. You see, people are so fearful. They say, I have to pay taxes. They know if they don't pay taxes, government will shut them down. But does that scripture stop there? The scripture says that if you are within Caesar's territories, you have to honor by paying tribute. Look, honor is not word of mouth. It is by getting the money, substance of your life, and putting it. I can, recognizing that this government has allowed me to operate within the framework of their establishment. So you pay tribute to the king. You pay tribute to the government. But did it stop there? He says that, but render unto God what belongs to God. If you recognize that Caesar rules of a territory, let me ask you, do you know what God owns? Do you know what God... Let me speak to the leaders. Do you know what God holds? Because you are a Bible-believing president. You swear by the Bible. And the Bible says, give to God. You are collecting taxes. And you swear by the Bible. In context, he's saying, but after collecting, remember what belongs to God. God says, the earth and the fullness thereof and all of them that dwell therein are whose they belong to god are you are you seeing what so every creation money the silver is mine and the gold is mine are you getting it i'm giving these presidents these world leaders clues to of how you can take a nation from third world to second world in the year of the pandemic is that possible? Is that possible? If the, if the wicked know that if we invest in Israel, Israel carries a blessing, the blessing of Abraham, natural blessing, which no nation can refute. But we are, haven't you seen the signs? Why are you being, how can you receive a miracle here and then you pay the tribute and honor to some other place? Do you choose where you pay your taxes? Do you give your taxes to your favorite charity? Do you... Okay. You say that so and so is my president. Don't acknowledge men in vain. If he's your president, give your taxes to him and see whether your shop will be opened. Recognize authority the spiritual way. Are you getting it? Yeah? So I'm saying that Dave is from my president. Uh, Charles is not my president. So okay. 
you give your taxes to Dave. Because of your feelings. Don't lie to yourselves. The Bible says, fools, slow of heart to believe. How long will it take you to enter into the dominion of God? You acknowledge that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. It is not by word of mouth. The Bible says that where the treasure of the man is, you believe with your heart. But if your treasure is not on the kingdom, the man that saw a great field and sold, the Bible says sold, that is a term of investment, selling and buying. He sold and he bought a field. Do you know the field? It is the anointing, the fertile ground that God has set for us. Not, not, not every ground can give you a hundredfold return on your investment. But we have proof across the world, the anointing that dominates the world. A man with an unprecedented record of fulfilled prophecies. He says, if there is a prophet among you, I'll raise up for you a prophet among you. Are you getting it? And I'll back him up with signs and wonders. This prophet, whose word never falls to the ground, he says something in America and it happens. He's told us that this means, this prophecy to the Oscars means that there is no place that this anointing does not cover. Who are you following? The one you're following is the one you're giving your money. I'm decoding this mystery. He said, I'm the, this is the greatest investment. And he said that we are moving. He said, take advantage that you may enter into dominion. Are you an heir of God? Are you a, am I giving away too much? This is an opportunity that the world does not know. Do you know how we got into all these nations? Is it by flesh? Is it by the arm of flesh? We are in Angola. We are in Kenya. We are in uh, USA. We are everywhere. We are online. You think we are fools. We are just wasting money. We know what we are doing. We know how to bring the world to its knees. When the prophet says that we are rolling back this darkness, it is true. We know how we do it. It is not by riots and complaining. It is not by riots and complaining. Get what you have. A person who, has, who says he has nothing to give is a robber. You are a robber. You have robbed God. You have your life. You can see. You can run. You can sing. There's so much you can give God so that he may multiply it. Put your talent, whatever God gave you, present it as a sacrifice before God. It will return. If you're not a giver, you don't believe in the resurrection. If you're not a giver, you don't believe in God. You are anti-Christ. It's as plain as that. It is like saying that I am I'm going to get a lot of money. Where are you investing? Where are you investing? Where have you investing? People are investing. You know, we have been affirming these things for a long time. But there is a pattern to it. Yes, affirmation is good. But then God gives you a pattern on how to do it. Heirs of gold. If you, are, if you are still being reminded to give, then you're still a baby. No one can hand all territories over you to you. You are still a baby. Grab! Why do I need you to, to remind you to go and collect goods from Kenya? Yet you are the one who started the business. You wanted to take advantage of the things that are made in UK, US, uh, Kenya, to bring them near so that you may prosper by another man's enterprise. No one should remind you. And yet with God, or concerning the things that are made in heaven, the eternal prosperity, prosperity that does not digress, regress, concerning divine health, where you do not know sickness, do we need to remind you to give? You are a baby. The Bible says you shall die like men. This is the Bible. I'm breaking it down. The Bible says they are neither hot nor cold. This is why the nations have made a fool of us. And yet we have the pattern. We have the sure word of what? Of prophecy. How can you not be a part of something great like this? How? Why should your business regress? Why? How? How? How can your marry? How can your marriage? He says that present your body, present your marriage as a living sacrifice. As a living sacrifice that you may see, that you may prove what is acceptable, good and the supernatural prosperity. Nothing lacking. Are you getting it? You need to bring the body of your life so that it might be fertilized by the seed, the anointing. 
and whatsoever. Your business is going to be surnamed the business of God. What prophet called the testimony of God? This is about investment. It's about giving. It's, a, it's not about numbers. Eh? God told Abraham, as one man, as one man, as one man, I will use you. You shall dominate. The, he did not, when he visited him, he was one man. But said, I'll make of you a great nation. Look at the stars, if you can number them. Then he told them, look at the sand. If you can, so shall your seed be. You know, Abraham came to God at the level of a son. Lord, I go without a son. I go without a son. What did God do? God gave him a vision that was bigger than the sun. He told him, look at the sand. So shall your seed be. That is supernatural prosperity. When what happens? He says, now, after that, what did he tell him? Now, take your only son. That one you wanted. When he gave him the son. Why did, don't you think God had the authority to give him as many without taking him through that traumatic experience of giving? <laughs> giving his son. He says, first of all, God gives you the son. And then he comes, take your son, your only son whom you love. What was God teaching Abraham? What is God teaching us today? What God has given us? He says, when he wants to multiply you, this is how you're going to take over the cyber world. He says, now take your only son, your salary. Take your only salary for this month, upon which everything is hinged. I'm telling you, that is the only son that Abraham had. And it's the only thing that God wanted. Because he knew, does Abraham believe that I am the life? And that I am the resurrection? That's what he was testing. And if he had failed the test, there would be no great and mighty nation. The blessing that God pronounced was hinged upon obedience. Of Abraham, are you getting it? If he had dared, we would be desolate. We would never be. Are you getting it? Take your son whom you love. This is something that Solomon, people want to be, I'll be like King Solomon. Do you know what Solomon did? When God gave him a job, you cannot even bring your first fruit. Who am I talking to? Not remnants. And yet you want to dominate this world? Say, not my portion. God has called us to dominion. And our Father has set a pattern before us. Do you know, this is how you check whether you are the seed of the devil or the seed of God. If these words offend you, just know. Just know. Just know you need to repent. Because how can you be offended by the way of dominion? You offended. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? We have the greatest investment. And he said, take advantage of this investment. What is God calling us to do? What is our vital participation? To bring you all. That scripture in the book of Acts. Where is it? Acts chapter 4. Where men went. After seeing what God was doing. In the lives of these previous fishermen. Think Acts chapter 4. 33. Let's start from 33. And with great power. The power of prophecy. With great power. Are you participating in what God is doing in Angola? Don't you want to dominate Angola? Don't you know that Angola has diamonds and gold? But you keep on saying. Prophet told us we are, God is going to be common. You shall, you shall see it but you shall not partake of it. If you are not giving. Be grafted into the flow. Are you getting it? Eh? Maybe that is why some people are complaining. But when will these prophecies come to pass? I'm showing you the way. They already, some people are already into it. It says, and with great power, the apostles gave witnesses, witness of the resurrection of the Lord. Even the resurrection of the Lord of Jesus Christ is based upon giving. Are you getting it? You cannot be a witness to the resurrection if you don't believe that you can sow a bean seed. And then it produces a garden of beans. If you don't believe that, you should not bear witness to the resurrection. I'm saying that if you cannot put your money on what God is doing, then you don't believe in the resurrection. It is here. And great grace was upon them all. Great grace, great ability, divine ability. You know you move. It's not about rioting. Prophet, today we are holding a riot <laughs> eh? against this government. Let me tell you, it is not... This is, it says don't be conformed to the way of the world. The world is about elections. It's about, but you know those great men that you admire, that control the nations, the Bill Gates, you go and read about them. You'll find that they're spiritual. Prosperity is spiritual. Dominion is spiritual. They dedicated their lives, their enterprise to a certain altar. Are you getting it? They're immovable. You find Democrats, uh, Republicans, all agreeing to one man's word. 
the rich rule over the poor. Rich politicians rule over poor politicians. Rich women rule over poor women. Rich companies rule over poor companies. But the way of the wealth of God is giving. He says, and great grace was upon them all. Next verse. Neither was there any. Neither. Neither. This is the result of giving. It's not an affirmation. The affirmation is the result of what is seen. Because you did something. Neither, neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold. Look at that next verse. And laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made according to every man. According as they had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus. Next verse. Having land, having land, having a bank, sold the bank. I have to make it sound extreme. Because God is extreme. He doesn't want to look what. He sold the bank, and guess where he brought the money without even paying government taxes? He brought the money to the feet because government did not recognize these people as uh, ministers of God. They thought they fit up. And land. He said, brought the money, sold the bank, and laid it at the feet of the anointing. Can you imagine? This is foolishness to the world. Next verse. It says, but a certain, a certain man who thought he was helping the anointing. This guy, you know, don't bring your pocket change to the anointing. You suffer this fate. It says, with Sapphira, his wife, sold the possession. They collected the best part and then gave, collected the, the leftovers, pocket change, and brought the anointing. Kept back the price. The price means the best part. His wife also being privy to it and brought pocket change and laid it at the feet of the anointing. Watch. Let me tell you, scripture cannot be broken. Take heed. It says, take advantage. Take heed how you give. It is better you don't give. What do you think of a farmer who first collects the best crop and then gets those dry ones which cannot be eaten? I say, now let me replant this one. That is a foolish farmer. What kind of crop? You're trying to expand and multiply. You're sowing again the worst of your harvest. That's why he says, he calls it first fruits. Before you do anything, get the tithes. You are acknowledging before you eat your profits in business. What do you do? You first pay the government taxes. But what about God? He says, do not fear that one, can that one who can destroy the flesh. But the one you should be afraid of is the one who can take away the natural wealth and also stop the spiritual. Don't you think if a man stands here and says that, we can, we have the authority. If we say this oil will not flow, it will not flow. If we say this oil should flow, it will flow. The Bible says that I've made you ordained your prophet. And I, I've called you for the lifting up of some and pulling down of others. Are you getting it? And I've put my word in your mouth. I've given you authority over nations. The rise and fall of nations is tied, is linked to nations giving or honoring the anointing. Are you a leader? Do you aspire to be a leader? Are you ready to honor the anointing? Not with lip service. We are showing you how to lift up a nation. We are showing you how to dominate industries. You wanted a car, but God wants you to dominate an industry. You wanted a healing, but God wants you to dominate the health industry. Are you getting it? God wants you to dominate. You wanted to pay your loan, and yet God is calling you by your living sacrifice to dominate the banking industry. Glory to God. Let us pray in thanks. Pira Brojondo Logosere Brojondo Logosita. Bada Casta Kiano Gora Gara Brojondo Logosere Bushila Kavro. Raba Dabo Sete Kesele Brojondo Logosere Bushila. Bada Kasete Brojondo Logosere Bushila Kavro. Everywhere across the world, it is time to act. God is calling us into action. This is the best time. It is the best season that God has given us. We do not know lockdown. The best that God has given us is an opportunity to give to this anointing. You don't come to a meeting like this without an offering. It is ungodly. It is anti-Christ. It's a mockery. Take it 
Tagara Rosondo Rosana Mushila Kabra. Balado Kosana Rosondo Rosana Mushila Kabra. Badala Castata Lebrosolo Kosana Mushila Kabra. Balado Kosata Lebrosondo Rosana Mushila Kabra. Balado Kosana Rosolo Kosana Mushila Kabra. Bagada Castata Lebrosolo Rosana Mushila Kabra. Bada Castata Lebrosolo Rosana Mushila Kabra. Marie Castata Lebrosolo Rosana Mushila Kabra. Balado Kosana Mushila Kabra. Now say these words after me. The mystery that my father has, I have it. That mystery works effectually in me, producing an identical result. Now say the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I am crowned with glory and honor. I am a remnant of God. I am an overcomer. I am blessed beyond measure. I am multiplied exceedingly. Unto me are given exceeding great and precious promises that by these I may participate in what God is doing in my generation. I walk in dominion and walk in supernatural prosperity. I have supernatural favor. I'm blessed beyond me. I am a remnant of God. I am an overcomer. Blessed be Prophetess of His Monument of the Most High God, Possessor of Heaven and Earth. Glory to God. You have made it in life. Come on, glory to God. Get up. Celebrate. Come on, let's celebrate. Keep on celebrating glory to God. Glory to Jesus. We celebrate the anointing upon our Father, Prophet Elvis Bonye, for what he has done for us by sending us his beloved son, Apostle Goodwill Magezi. Thank you so much. Glory to God. And there's no better way we can demonstrate the appreciation for our Father by putting it but that by putting into action what has been showed unto us by his son and right now we are going to take our general and prophetic offering we have this opportunity to put into activation and manifestation and solidification that which has been released to us right now and right now you take your offering in honor of the prophet oh Lord you feel my cup runs over my cup runs over and overflow and overflow oh Lord fill my cup Jesus oh Lord you feel my cup you when you will overcome because the word of the Lord upon your life is you are an overcomer now in other words there is dominion waiting for you there is power over nations waiting for you for the kingdom takeover such as never seen before the light of God is beaming to his supreme prophet prophet Elvis Mbonye unlocking a portal of wealth and prestige to subdue the nations of the world by partnering with prophet Elvis Mbonye 
Join the heirs of gold for a special partnership meeting. Saturday, May 1st, 2021, 10 a.m. Live online at www.prophetelvis.com slash heirs of gold. Become an heir of gold. Visit our website at www.prophetelvis.com slash heirs of gold. It's a lifestyle. It is the yell of the overcomers, just like Prophet Elvis Munye mentioned in that clip. Well, thank you so much to everyone that has tuned in to be a part of this glorious fellowship and to be blessed by the words and by everything that comes from Prophet Elvis Munye. Thank you so much to all the people that have tuned in for the very first time and you're very welcome. Make sure next time you as well invite somebody else to tune in and be blessed by Prophet Elvis Munye. It is a place of love, the realm of God and has power to change your life forever. Now don't forget to follow Prophet Elvis Munye on all his social media platforms. Hit the notification button for you to know when he's going live. And by the way, fellowship doesn't end only today. We have more programs and more things that happen. So when you follow him, you'll know what happens. To all those that have been watching from Rwanda, Kenya, Tanzania, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Angola, the US and so many other countries, may God continuously continue blessing you. And don't forget to still love on Prophet Elvis Money and always share with the hashtag Prophet Elvis Mbonye. From the team and I, have a lovely night and we love you.